This is Marie McCabe doing an oral history on February 28, 1984. I'm interviewing Walter Frouchi, F-R-A-U-T-S-C-H-I. Uh, Mr. Frouchi, will you tell me who your father was? My father was uh, Emil J. Frouchi. He was uh, born in Madison, so he's been in these parts for a long, long time. Actually, he was born in a house on Franklin Street, which when he was born was called Canal Street, because um, at one time someone made a, a plan for the development of uh, Madison and uh, anticipated uh, tying Lake Mendota and Lake Monona together by canals, and uh, uh, of course this canal was never dug, and Canal Street then became Franklin Street. And uh, that who were his parents? His uh, uh, parents, uh, his father was Christian Frouchi, who came to this country, uh, and I can't be exactly precise about that, as perhaps my brother Lowell might, but I think it was about 1865, just after the Civil War. And uh, he met his wife, my grandmother, who was Elizabeth, uh, Kunz, K-U-N-Z, Frouchy. Incidentally, the Kunz uh, uh, name was changed by other members of that uh, family to Kensler, and the Kensler is a well-known name in Madison, and they were cousins of my grandmother. But actually, my grandmother was uh, born in Fond du Lac County, and she came with, or her parents had come uh, uh, with uh, the family of the famous Dr. Sen, who was Swiss, and uh, came to Chicago, and then somehow or other got up in Fond du Lac County, but there was a group that came from Glarus in Switzerland. My grandfather came from uh, Stad, G-S-T-A-D, in Switzerland. Switzerland. Mm -hmm. In Switzerland, that's mm -hmm. right. And what did he, uh, did he come immediately to Madison, and what did he do here? Uh, he uh, stopped in Paris and worked there for some time as a cabinet maker, and that's what he was. He started, uh, I think he worked uh, for some time up in the neighborhood of Baraboo, as I recall, but uh, eventually came back to Madison uh, not too long after his arrival in this country and uh, started a furniture and undertaking establishment uh, on Webster Street uh, before he moved to King Street. Uh, you know, um, uh, furniture stores and uh, undertaking establishments commonly in this country are run by the same families mm -hmm. because uh, it involved the making of the caskets. Oh, that's right. Which, uh, mm -hmm. particularly if the furniture store was uh, started by a cabinet maker. Mm -hmm. In our family, as a matter of fact, uh, my grandfather was a very skilled cabinet maker and uh, we still have chairs that he made uh, scattered mm -hmm. around. Uh, and uh, I do remember the, the entire dining room set, the table and the, in his bedroom, his bed and all that sort of thing that he made. But these chairs are beautiful. I have two of them myself and Lowell has others and oh, cousins have others of those Were your chairs. grandparents uh, still living? Did you know them? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And your father went into the furniture business then? No, my father um, was the eldest of a fairly large family and uh, left high school his freshman year. He went to Chicago and studied uh, uh, Morse code to go into the railroad business. And, and uh, my father was quite a remarkable person, I think, and um, uh, he um, came back to Madison and worked for the railroad for a while, and then eventually uh, he moved over to the Gissel and worked for the Johnson Brothers, as he called them, mm -hmm. uh, who, of course, owned the Gissel at that time. And then his career, he... Um, he being the eldest, of course, uh, after my grandfather died, and I can't give you that name, that date, but I must have been maybe nine years old, and I was born in 1901. Do you know what, remember when your father was born, that date? 
No, but he died in 1959, and he was 87 years old. Oh. <coughs> Which, uh, if you can add or subtract that <laughs> rapidly, that, uh, that uh -huh. would tell you uh, at I least uh, the approximate year. And do you remember the um, uh, the names of the others, um, your uncles and aunts, then? Oh, I think so. Um, um, next to my father was uh, Bertha. She worked in the furniture store for a long, long time. Incidentally, my father, I suppose, uh, always went to the furniture store at least once a day, but he had nothing to do with the operation, mm -hmm. but he was through inheritance, had an interest there, and uh, so on. Mm -hmm. uh, Irving Crouchy um, ran the furniture store. Arthur Crouchy um, was the undertaker, mortician, than you'd call it today. Mm -hmm. uh, Lillian Crouchy married uh, Dr. E. E. Baker, who was a Madison dentist. Uh, Alice Fauci married, um, I think the man's name was Alan. He was a veterinarian, and they lived in the South someplace. Oh, the no, last not, name no, was they, Alan. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they left Madison. Mm -hmm. And uh, Edna, mm -hmm. the youngest, uh, married uh, Walter Schmidt who incidentally was a brother of Dr. Irwin Schmidt, uh, who was head surgeon at the University Hospitals. Mm -hmm. And you may remember him if you've been around here that mm -hmm. long, mm -hmm. Dr. Schmidt. Uh, there was another brother in the middle there who went off the Spanish-American War, and got into the Philippines, and then came back to Chicago, but somehow he was, was kind of lost in the family mm -hmm. history and didn't come back to Madison. Mm -hmm. So I can't tell you much about him. His name was Adolf. Oh. I think uh, I don't think I've left anyone out. Well, that is a large family. Yes. And um, and your mother's family, her name. Uh, you want to come back to my father because I do want right, to tell you a fine. few things about him. But my mother's Tell name uh, was Parman. She was born in Mazamani. There are Parmans there still in the Mazamani region, and they'd be cousins of mine. Uh, but mother uh, was the youngest of that family, uh, came off from a farm, but uh, nonetheless uh, uh, was able to come to the University of Wisconsin and she finished uh, the university in the class of 1895. And, and that's where she met your father, I presume. And, well, the Evangelische Gemeinschaft, uh, or the Evangelical Association Church, had a great deal to do with our family. In mm -hmm. fact, that's where I'm sure my grandfather met uh, his uh, wife, Elizabeth Kuntz, and that's where I know that my mother and father met each other, oh, was at the church, uh, which was, uh, the history of that church, incidentally, is rather interesting, and we might speak of that. Mm -hmm. That church was on the triangle um, where, um, I don't know what's there just now, there's a building at one time during the war, it was... Uh, or just before the war, it was Montgomery and Ward's store downtown, and later it's well, Jackson Clinic was near. There is the triangle across the street from the Emporium, and the corner of Pinckney Hancock, Street and yeah. North mm -hmm. Hamilton. Hamilton, yes. North mm -hmm. Hamilton and Pinckney Street. Mm -hmm. uh, and the whole family went there. That's right. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, well, I was going to ask you. I will ask you later on about some activities there. Mm -hmm. So. Um, well, my mother, uh, of course, was went to that church while she was going to the university. And Did you give me her first name? Uh, Ida. Ida. Okay. I D A. I D A. Ida Parman. P A R M A N. Then she became a a Latin teacher. She taught Latin in Broadhead, Broadhead, oh. Wisconsin. After university. After uh -huh. university. Mm -hmm. So how many years later were, were your parents married then? Oh, I can't give you the year they, they were married. But she taught for two or three <coughs> years, I assume. Mm -hmm. I would think so, mm -hmm. something like that. All mm -hmm. right. And then you were the oldest child born. That's right. And what year? 1901. 1901. Uh -huh. And what other children followed? Just one brother. There were just the two of us, Lowell, Lowell and Lowell. Oh. My brother was three years younger. I see. Uh -huh. You know Lowell, don't I you? I know Lowell, yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I somehow assumed there were others. And uh, where were your uh, parents living when you were born? 
well, this is kind of interesting. The house in which I was born is within uh, three blocks of where my father was born. Oh. And the, it was 408 East Washington Avenue. And uh, the house is still there, uh, but it's behind the stucco house, which my father built. It's in the middle of the block behind uh, uh, 408 uh, East Washington Avenue now. It was a white house, uh, which I remember very well because I was certainly old enough when the house was moved uh, into the middle of the block and my father built a house in front of it. Oh. And that house is still there. It's a stucco house, rather a large house as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, I don't know what period you'd call it, but uh, uh, kind of a big house as a matter of fact, a very nice place. For the for that time, mm -hmm. it's right next door to the Madison Steam Dye. Oh yes, I know that location. In fact, the know. house in the present Steam Dye works uh, just a narrow walkway apart. And it's just a couple. But of the blocks little house is in the back from the Capitol Square. That's right. And wasn't was the water tower near there? That's right. I remember um, the water tower very well. I imagine you did. You must have been <laughs> inside of it a great deal. Well, I remember one huge crowd and of course the farmers always came in and had the market there and tied mm -hmm. their horses and things along that street. Uh, there was a made quite an impression on, uh, upon me at that time. Uh, some um, Somebody got to the top of the tower and there was a platform down below and a man, uh, the principal of the act, held a fork in his mouth and uh, looked up at the top and this man dropped a rutabaga down and he caught, <laughs> he, he caught the... On the fork? Uh, on the end of the fork. Good heavens. As I say, that was an episode that I... Uh, oh, I would uh, think so. Boy, I can remember. Oh. Well, you, were you born in the house? That's right. Uh-huh, which was the... I don't think that, in at that age people weren't uh, born in the uh, hospital. Oh, I didn't think so either and I meant to ask that. Sure. Uh, well, I, mm -hmm. I doubt it. Mm -hmm. Maybe some. Uh, it was cleaner in the house. I don't think they trusted hospitals very much then, for one thing. Well, I don't remember anything about that. No, I don't but suppose of course, you do. The, the, the hospitals we have today hadn't even been built. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I suppose there was a hospital, but. Oh, yes, probably. Madison General Hospital. I, I, later, I can remember. Uh, it is the core. I don't know that any of that still stands. Maybe it might be incorporated in the present buildings, but I doubt it. Mm -hmm. But it was the same site. Oh, I didn't realize that. It took the streetcar out to get there, mm -hmm. down Mill Street. Well, your uh, your father was um, um, working in town in this well, he at left, that time. He uh, he left the Gisholt and. Uh, that's how this happened. I can't quite be sure, but he came the, became the manager of the local telephone company. Oh. Uh, so he started as a, in the, with a the railroad, then he went to the Gisolt, and then from the Gisolt to... Uh, and there were two telephone companies in Madison at that time, the Dane County Telephone and the Wisconsin Bell. And my father was uh, instructed by the Milwaukee Home Offices of Wisconsin Bell to buy out the, the competition which he did, and uh, it's a good thing for the stockholders and the people of that time. And I can remember this, I suppose I must have been 10 or 11 years old, something like that, uh, because there was a terrific storm, one of the worst blizzards uh, in Madison history along in that time. And the uh, ice, uh, and there were some pictures around someplace, the ice on every line, and this was all overhead, uh, wires at that time, and uh, there was a, a coating of ice uh, as big around as a, as a baseball on um, all of those wires, and of course uh, that the weight of that, uh, plus I suppose the results of the storm, every pole was on the ground and the service was completely obliterated, and I'm sure it would have put them out of business anyway. But at any rate, the, the fun thing that I like to remember and talk about was that telephone business. My father brought home some of the unused uh, telephones from the old Dane County company, and they were magneto phones with a crank on the side. Mm -hmm. And low, and we had them up in our attic of that new house by that time. 
and we charged the neighborhood kids a penny apiece to come in and get shocked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that must have been a thrill <laughs> for them. And you were glad to get the pennies, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> well, what do you remember about the house? Uh, was it a fairly large one, you said? Oh, yes, that house was, um, for its time, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the architect. It was a well-known Madison Stark. Oh, Stark was an architect. And it, I think it was spelled S-T-A-R-C-K. Oh, uh-huh. Not Paul Stark. Yeah. So it was a fairly new house then? Oh, brand new. Mm -hmm. My father built in so front of the old house, which he moved into the back, oh, uh -huh. back lot. Uh -huh. I don't suppose that would be permitted today with side yards and fence mm -hmm. guide and so on. So you lived in the house in the front? Well, yes, uh, and then my father rented the old house and had uh -huh. rent tenants in the back. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And um, that house is still there. I saw it the about, other day. What it's, about um, uh, other houses in the neighborhood? Were they similar? Well, I this you know wasn't the what you might call the Gold Coast of Madison or Mansion Hill or anything of that sort, but uh, yes. Uh, there was a vacant, uh, where the Madison Dye Works is now, it was vacant, but there was a house on the corner, and that was, as I recall, I remember the name of the family was Peterson, but it was um, just a frame house. However, in the other direction, toward the Capitol, on the corner, a very substantial house, which is was of yellow brick, and that's still there, and I think it's a real estate office, mm -hmm. converted, of course. So this was a residential area then, uh, rather than commercial, oh, yes, as it yeah, is now? Oh, yes, yeah, yes, yes, definitely. That, that, yeah, that there was no dye company. <laughs> there were churches. <laughs> or the, the Madison, rest of the street wasn't devoted. St. John's uh, Lutheran Church oh, yes, was still uh -huh. there, and then across the, that place there's a restaurant there now called, uh, what is that called there? Mm. Oh, you mean right in the church? Yeah, the, the one church is the monastery. Been, the monastery, uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. That was the Norwegian well, how Lutheran church. How far out did, did uh, Washington go at that time? Was it a, a mile Oh, it went way out. It, went, it went way out, but of course it went over marsh. Oh. Uh, much of that area was marsh, and on Sundays we frequently took a, a hike or a walk, and you'd have to walk on wooden sidewalks uh, oh. through the marsh. Uh, I suspect my father walked uh, when I was a baby, walked to the Gissel, mm -hmm. and, oh. but uh, the avenue was straight out. That, that I, I don't remember the nature of the, of the roads, except that I do recall in front of our house in the 400 block, uh, we didn't have curbs, but you had boulders. Boulders? Yeah. Did you have horses? In those days, you hadn't gotten well. We didn't know. I think no. some people, sure. Mm -hmm. some I've, people. I've heard several people had a barn and kept mm -hmm. a horse. <coughs> yeah, well, we didn't, but other people, President Van Heys had a horse mm -hmm. and rode, rode all over the campus with a, <laughs> with a horse. So, how yeah. did your father get around? Mostly uh, Shanks Mare, I guess. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And yeah. he walked his whole He didn't have an automobile. In fact, uh, I think I owned a, when I went to college, I had the first car in the, in the family. Oh. My father learned to drive much later in life. That's an advantage of living close to town, close sure. to the center of town, sure. that you can walk everywhere. That's right. Do you remember, um, I was wondering what sort of um, conveniences you had in this new home. Did you have a, a furnace? And, um, it was a coal furnace. Uh, coal. Uh, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, the thing I remember particularly was there was an enormous tank in the attic, and that was the tank room where we collected rainwater. Oh. So some of the faucets in the house apparently must have delivered uh, mm -hmm. soft water for washing. And, you know, we used to have uh, use. what we called a cistern in the basement, mm -hmm. you know, a walled off area. <coughs> yes, well, this would be a cistern, except it was in the attic. In the attic, mm -hmm. And so gravity, I suppose. You didn't have hot water, though, I don't presume, in your tank. That was, I think that was quite a bit later that hot water heaters came along. You know, I don't remember about mm -hmm. that, to tell the truth. You uh, had a coal bin in the uh -huh, basement, yeah, and yeah, yeah. then people came and delivered it. That's right. Um, did you have to shovel coal when you got a little older for your furnace? Oh, I suppose I did. Uh, I, I don't seem to remember too much about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I always worked uh, summers and so on and later when I could, and uh, 
that was the standard thing to do. But. Well, I wondered if you, uh, do you remember the, uh, this is the sort of thing that women are apt to remember more about the cooking. Uh, well, I can, uh, mother made bread, and I can remember uh, uh, having to crank the, the thing that, uh, it was a great big a dome, dome. Mm -hmm. well, inverted dome type of thing with a crank on the top, and, and I had to frequently wind that. Did she have a, need. I was wondering if she had a big cook stove uh, that was yes, wooden. Uh, yes, she did. Wood. I can I can visualize that, and it had a reservoir on the side. Uh -huh. uh, it wasn't wood wood burning, though. I think it was, uh, must have been gas, I suppose. Oh, uh -huh. you think it was gas? She had a fireless cooker, I remember, that uh -huh. fancy uh -huh. thing. <laughs> and do you remember how she did the laundry? Did you have, it was probably the... Well, uh, Before the machine days. Yeah, she had a, there were lines in the yard, uh, mm -hmm. I guess a revolving sort of thing. And, and in the later years, when I was, uh, well, as late as, see, we lived in that house uh, until about, I guess, my junior year in college. Oh. So we were there for a long time. And I'm sure we had hot water. By then. By then, anyway, mm -hmm. but I don't recall whether it was changed uh, in the mm -hmm. room or not. I, I can't recall just when we... I can remember the old house being moved into the center and uh, leaving a great gaping hole where the previous basement had been and then the new house built on top of it. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have um, friends when you were little in the neighborhood? Well, both Lowell and I went eight years to grammar school at uh, Brayton School, oh. which uh, now is a parking lot <laughs> uh, right across the street up at the top there, and that would be the 200 block of East Washington oh. Avenue. Mm -hmm. It's that parking lot next to Turner Hall. I see. Mm -hmm. So we had to go <coughs> across the street. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sure, we had friends. Uh, I don't know much about them now. Uh, I was wondering if you played games on that vacant lot, if uh, you remembered the... Uh, oh, yeah, sure. We, we, you built, so we built leaf houses, and oh. that's one of the things I remember that uh, I don't see done very much. You put up laths and made walls about that thick with leaves and then played. <laughs> I can't you remember that we had a roof on it. You but could go inside, and mm -hmm. it was a sort mm -hmm. of a little den. Hmm? Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, that's news to me, too. Uh -huh. And in the uh, winter, I suppose you had. I can't give the names of some of these people, but oh. I haven't any idea. There was one boy that I went to also school who worked for us uh, as a as a pressman later, and, but he died about four or five years ago. And I never was really intimate with him, although I, I knew him. And his brother actually was older. Uh, it was our press foreman. What were their names? Olson. Olson. The one of my age was Arthur Olson, and the older brother was Ted Olson. Mm -hmm. Back in our letterpress days, we were a very different company now. <laughs> well, uh, um, you remember others who were in your school who went to Brayton with you? Well, uh, there was a boy named Gordon Rodell. I think he must be around, R-O-W. Uh, they lived around the corner. Mm -hmm. and I mentioned that Peterson family. They had a boy, uh, but I don't know what happened to these people. Do, do you uh, remember any of your teachers at Brayton? Oh, sure. Uh -huh. they, um, I think about it, I probably think of all of them. <laughs> anyway, uh, fourth grade was a, yes, uh, Let's see, was her name Mosley? I think so. Or Harper. No, Miss Harper. Miss Harper. Uh -huh. Blanche Harper. Is that right? I can't tell you the first name. I but think somebody else <laughs> mentioned her to me. Uh -huh. Oh, really? Yeah, uh -huh. Miss. And I think she was an, a an aunt of uh, Sam Harper's. Oh. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Mm -hmm. The principal of the school was uh, Annette Jones. Oh. And her assistant, there were two teaching the eighth grade, was a Miss Pierce. And uh, 
the seventh grade was a Miss Wiswell. Wiswell? Wiswell. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, you uh, had a good time there at uh, oh, I think so. Brayton sure. School. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, Remember what so. kind of games you might have played outside? Oh, softball, baseball, mm -hmm. and... and uh, marbles? Sure, we played marbles, mm -hmm. lots of marbles. And, uh, and in summer, not necessarily at school, but we, we played the conventional things of... Uh, what do we call it? Uh, run, my good chief, run, or something good like chief, that. Good chief, good run, run, sheep, run. Yeah, that's what we call it. Uh -huh. Sheep or chief? Sheep, we call it. Oh, I thought run, sheep, run. Well, I think we said chief. I oh, don't know no. why. <laughs> but it sounds more Indian. Uh -huh. Maybe I can think that way. Used to play, play, ever play Washington Pope? No. That was one no. of our favorites. A um, sedentary game we played uh, quite a lot. Sometimes we'd go up on the Lutheran church to play, and that's when we were much younger. Was, um, go to school, I think it was, and you advance grades on the steps oh, yes. by guessing uh, which hand had a marble. <laughs> I'd forgotten that one. Uh -huh. And you could go up one. and then back down. Uh -huh. um, I liked to read when I was a boy. I did it constantly, and uh, all kinds of books. And, that was my mother's influence, I think. She liked to read, too. And you probably had a swing and uh, things like that. Or was there a playground? You could, you, you could go over to the playground in yes. the school. Yes. Uh -huh. Did you go to the lakes? Uh, did you use... Um, well, it beaches? depends upon the age that you're talking about later well, on. Grade in school, high, in high school. Well, in grade school, uh, not very much. Uh, once in a while, I think we'd take a boat ride on Sunday or something. I'd start mm -hmm. uh, in... I think there was more activity on the lakes then, uh, possibly even now, of, of a commercial side. Was that sort. beach uh, at the foot of the hill then, where by the water tower, where water uh, works? Um, oh, uh, where they're making the apartments? Mm -hmm. um, well, no, we, I don't recall, well, yes, that the foot of Franklin Street on Lake Mendota, there was a Tracy boat house. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a commercial outfit. Mm -hmm. And then up uh, the street, and these were friends of ours too, uh, those Lowell's and mine, the Bernard boys and the uh, Bernard Boat Line. And the father was a very famous boat builder, built rowboats, particularly oh. of a certain um, style, which were very well known, uh, even mm -hmm. outside of Madison, I think. Mm. And it was fun to go to his shop. And see these boats being built, but they also had the, the commercial, uh, well, not a steamer, I think, but a, a light launch. I think we called them launches in those days. Mm -hmm. That went around the lake mm -hmm. on regular trips, I guess. Yes. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, uh, mail was delivered by boat oh. in those days, in mm. part of that period. Mm -hmm. Many summers I worked, and then Lowell did too, following me at uh, Camp Indianola, which was a boys' camp. Oh. Yeah, it, uh, Over on the other side. On the other side of the lake, lake it's Mendoza. part of the property that the state has now purchased, mm -hmm. and for eventually there'll be a big park there, I guess. Wakanda, yeah. Camp Wakanda. Well, area. that's why YMCA. Oh yes. Uh -huh. An incident. Well, you were more interested in grade school. I'm kind of. You know, that's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Uh, you uh, just to stay in sequence here. Um, you did go. Um, eight grades there. Mm -hmm. I wondered about summers. Did your family take um, trips anywhere? No, my father was a hard-working person, but um, in, uh, several years, I can't say that was every year, but several years during those grade school times, he rented a cottage at Lake uh, at Mendota Beach, and uh, he would went, then walk up to the old Middleton Road, and there was a Middleton-Madison bus at that time. He'd go to work, uh -huh. but he'd get up at uh, 5 o'clock in the morning and go fishing, and uh, whether well, there were more fish in those days than today, I don't know, but it seemed every day he'd bring in a mm -hmm. pail full of fish, and of course I went uh, with him, and, and we... Uh, so you you were at the cottage most of the summer then? No, two weeks. Two weeks, I yeah. see. Just uh -huh. two weeks. Uh -huh. uh, 
was pretty customary for people, I understand, to uh, mm -hmm. use the lakes in that way. Then one summer, I do recall, and uh, I've forgotten about that, we went to Lake Mills and stayed in a cottage on Rock Lake oh. uh, for two weeks uh -huh. again. Uh -huh. How did you get there? By train, I think. Oh, uh -huh. And my father, I think, must have stayed there then. I don't think he, he certainly mm -hmm. didn't commute from Lake Mills no. in those days. <laughs> Did your mother have any help in the house, or did she do all the yes, work? Yes, well, off and on, and uh, yes, uh, she did. Uh, uh, not live-in help, mm -hmm. but uh, a cleaning lady. Oh yes. Uh -huh. At that time. So was she? Did she? Uh, have this is kind of interesting because uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I had a telephone call and then a letter from a woman who said her, and this comes back to the church. Her, a friend, or I, I don't know whether it was this lady herself, anyway, she's somebody that lives out on Mifflin Street, is interested in the history of that church because her friend's uh, ancestors were the first preacher, the German preacher that came to this uh, mm -hmm. German uh, church where our family went. What was his and, name, uh, do you remember? Reiner, oh. I think, R E I. And, he are, and I think this woman is in Green Bay, as I recall. This is just recently. But um, at any rate, uh, uh, that woman's maiden name was Bossert, B-O-S-S-E-R-T. And uh, she said she assumed that her family, or this friend's family, must have been quite poor. Uh, I don't know how she got that, but as a matter of fact, it I think was true because it was Mrs. Bussert who was my mother's uh, maid and oh, uh, uh -huh. mm -hmm. or cleaning lady, I guess you'd do call you, it. Do you remember your, your parents entertaining? Did they have parties or dinners that they're... Oh, I think uh, Sunday dinners mm -hmm. primarily. Oh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. Sunday noon dinner. Uh -huh. When they'd invite... Uh, and, a lot, and I think a lot of that, again, they were friends that they'd met at the church. Mm -hmm. and again, it depends upon what period you're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, later on, my mother and father had in our later years had some wonderful friends primarily associated with the university and mm -hmm. that's when they moved out to, to uh, the west side of town and mm -hmm. dad built a house. I think that was my junior year in college. That would have been about 23. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, that's interesting um, that Sunday would be the time when they would make arrangements mm -hmm. to invite people to come after church, I presume, I After church, mm -hmm. and... Uh, and that was a good time. How long have you been uh, in Madison? Since 41. So, uh, this is, uh, some of these names and things don't mean to... Did, you didn't know Professor Kekofer? Oh, did I knew Wild, him. Wild Bill oh, yes, I knew of him very well. <laughs> well, his father was the bishop of our church, and oh. every time he came to Madison, he stayed with us. And, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, um, I was wondering if you were if you played any um, games at home. Did you have any when you were young? Well, when we were very young, uh, I remember the carpet in our living room, which is a good sized living room. I think it was a, a Wilton carpet. Mother used mm -hmm. to talk about it, and it had a pattern which kind of made it look like a marble marble. The ring and I know Lowell and I would play marbles <laughs> on that carpet. Um, Did your parents play with you? Uh, any card games or? No, no, that was kind of verboten. <laughs> Especially on yeah. Sundays, I guess. Uh -huh. Well, it wasn't all that strict. Uh, as a matter of fact, Mother was in some ways rather broad-minded, but uh, there was never any liquor in our house or in smoking or anything of that sort. And uh, even card games were looked at a little bit out of the corner, at least in those early years. Well, you went uh, fishing with your with your father. I was oh, wondering yes. if there were other activities you did with him. Well, walks, uh, Sunday walks, oh, yes. uh, primarily. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I think we played the normal kind of things out around. I, I can't remember what they were. We had wagons and coasters, and, uh -huh. and then in the winter, and I guess in this recent thing that they did for our family, uh, it was mentioned that we iced the street in the winter and had bobsleds. 
right down East Washington? East Washington Avenue. Oh. You couldn't do that today. Oh, but, uh, no, but that would have been uh, fun. I mean, there was some talk about it being dangerous, and I think sometimes we set up sentinels and so on, but uh, uh, this went on, you know, I think, students and others. It was Pinckney Street was a famous place, but on East Washington mm -hmm. Avenue, it was used even by students. Mm -hmm. You know what a bob is. Well, well, it's a sled in the front and a sled in the back, and oh. then a long, long board, and as many as oh. fifteen people would get on, and then the, and then the great prize was to sit on the end of the board at the end. It's bounced. And, and uh, no, I didn't realize that that was um, that was a sort of a temporary structure. Then was it? Oh no, no, you know, they, 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 some of them were pretty fancy. You nailed them together uh, at least. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I you ask about uh, Lake. Funny, I can remember more about. Uh, Later, Lowell and I owned boats and things that sort, but that's high school time. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think we we were on skates. I do remember mm -hmm. much more than I can remember much about the summers. Yeah, and, and I imagine you did a fair amount of sledding too, with uh, oh, yes, with the yeah. hills around. That's right. Um, well, now we'll get you into um, beyond grade school. Except there was one thing I did want to ask about your youngest days, if you remember how you celebrated Christmas, for instance, and uh, maybe the Fourth of July. Well, I think that Christmas was generally with the family, and at that time my grandfather uh, when. I think I said that I was probably nine or ten years old when my grandfather died, and I, I, I remember the day, but I can't remember the year. Uh, but we did have Christmas uh, where they lived, and they lived above the furniture store on King Street. Oh. At uh, mm -hmm. the second block, uh, that's now part of a state office, mm -hmm. one of those state office buildings mm -hmm. on King Street. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, we also had uh, Christmas trees, and I think one of my mother's sisters from Ava Maney uh, frequently spent Christmas with us. And it was a family affair. We had candles, I know. Went to, did you go to church uh, ritually? Uh, I think so. Oh, sure. Did you yeah. open presents uh, Christmas Eve or Christmas morning? I think Christmas morning, you know. Mm -hmm. I think we, uh, we went through the Santa Claus routine. And, uh -huh. Believed in Santa Claus. Sure. In those days. <laughs> what about Thanksgiving? Was that also at your grandparents? I um, I can't be specific about the other mm -hmm. holidays as such. Mm -hmm. uh, my father liked to go out. Uh, uh, Sunday dinners weren't always at home. And now that I think back, and there were two or three well-known restaurants in Madison where we went for. Sunday dinners. One was the Simon House, which... Uh, that was close by. <laughs> you know where that was. Mm -hmm. And another was a, a place called Cronin's, which was in the basement of where the Tenney Building is now. Oh. Uh, the building that stood there before. Mm -hmm. And there was a very fine restaurant. And once in a while, uh, we'd go to Stidgeon's, which was, you probably heard of that, too. That was famous steakhouse behind where the Park Hotel is now, I right see. in the same block. Oh, well, that must have been quite a treat. I haven't heard of other people who went out for, for to restaurant meals so much, so that's a... Well, later when my father got into the coal business, uh, I guess I hadn't mentioned that, after his, his um, telephone experience, three Madison businessmen came to him and asked him if they, he wouldn't join them in buying a bankrupt coal company which he did, and then Dad became the manager of that, and then eventually that's what his eventual business was. Oh, what was and the name of it? Madison Fuel Company. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And uh, then later, uh, I think partly through the nudging of Lowell and me, he went into the oil business along with it, and uh, that's much later. Uh, and uh, Dad was a good businessman, and, uh, and the, eventually he bought out the other three businessmen. That was Mr. Ela, maybe these names are... Ela? Ela. Mm -hmm. Janet Ela's Ela. mm -hmm. um, uh, father-in-law. Father. Oh, father-in-law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, Janet married Walter Yes, uh-huh. Right. And there are other Elas, Bob Ela. Uh -huh. In fact, I had lunch this noon with Bob Ela. Did you? 
And, uh, He's on the list of people I uh, might interview eventually. Mm -hmm. Well, his father, Emerson Ela, was uh, a lawyer in town, and, uh, and the other two men were Wiedenbeck and Doblin. Oh, yes, I've heard that mentioned. Mm -hmm. then, uh, they were partners in a um, wholesale, heavy uh, industry tool business. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you know any of the Wiedenbeck children? Oh, sure. Uh -huh. They went to Brayton School, I believe. No, I... I don't think so. I think they must have gone to Lincoln School. Oh, maybe so. Mm -hmm. But yeah. but then would have gone to high school. Because I know where they lived on Gorham Street. In fact, I used to walk over there. I <laughs> I played the cornet in the early days. Oh. And, uh, and the elder, Mr. Wiedenbeck, Ted, young Ted, whom you might have known, and uh, he, he ran for mayor, I think, a while ago. Oh, I didn't know that. This young Wiedenbeck. But I think he died. Oh, that may be. But uh, <laughs> the father gave me cornet lessons. I see. <laughs> yes, I know they were musical. Well, do you remember, uh, this probably didn't impress you, but the kind of clothes that you wore to grade school? No. I do you don't. remember pictures? I suppose it was the little knee pants. Knee well, they were, yeah, they were yeah. knee pants, and you wore black stockings, I guess. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 yes, I, that sounds pretty typical. Well, um, now uh, you've gone on to um, uh, high school, and that was where? Uh, well, it's the um, present vocational school. Uh, that was the only high school in Madison, only public high school in Madison, except for Wisconsin High School, which was part of the university system. Of course, that's oh, was that now. there then? I didn't know. Well, out at the university, it's, mm -hmm. it's on the mall, Henry Mall. Yes, I know, but I didn't know it was there when you uh, were going to high school. Oh, sure, because my wife went there. Oh. But this was called Madison High, wasn't it? Uh, Madison High School, went, uh, yes. Uh -huh. It wasn't Central High. It later became Central High when there was an East High and then a West High. Mm -hmm. But it was just Madison High School. And you were able to walk over there without That's any right. trouble. That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, I did forget to ask you if you remembered about the Capitol burning. Well, no. You see, I would have been one or two years old, but that just vaguely... Wasn't it 1905? I thought it was three, but I'm not oh, sure. okay. Uh, mm -hmm. It could have been five, but mm -hmm. maybe but it is, because I vaguely recall, um, but maybe I was told this, one of my uncles running by, my father, of course, had gone to work, and knocking on a window and uh, telling my mother, this is a 400 block, uh, that the Capitol was burning. Mm -hmm. But then as you... Uh, then I've heard the story so many, many times <laughs> from uh, uh, one of our my closest friends was Dick Marshall. Uh, did you know Dick? Mm -hmm. He died just last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and he liked to tell the story. And then my former business partner, the president of this company, Peggy Brandenburg, he frequently would tell the story oh, too. Uh -huh. The Brandenburgs lived up on... Langdon Street. Well, as you, I was thinking, as you went to um, high school, you must have been watching this rebuilding, uh, or even grade school. It took well, many, many years to rebuild, I understand. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, I can remember the old uh, fence around uh, the Capitol Square. I think they moved those pillars to the Mendota Hospital. Oh, really? Oh. Uh, do you remember some of your teachers at high school? Oh, quite well. <laughs> what name? Well, remember? I suppose a woman that had, uh, the person who had as much influence upon me as anyone uh, other than my own family was uh, Lita Wilson. She was a Latin teacher and uh, uh, very, very demanding. But uh, I still think I owe her a lot. Uh, you learned how to study and produce. Uh, you liked books, you said. Wasn't there a Latin club? I don't recall that. Um, no, maybe not, not there. Oh, uh -huh. Not in my years, anyway. Mm -hmm. I see. I graduated from high school in 1920. Oh, uh -huh. no! I guess this was earlier. But there was. I was there from class. 16 to mm -hmm. 20. Did you uh, take a regular college preparatory class mm -hmm. uh, course? Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't know that you could select. Uh, we did have some. Um, Older boys uh, in high school at that time, I remember, who 
really uh, wanted to learn came back from the first war. Mm -hmm. So they were a few years. Mm -hmm. See, I missed the first war and I missed the second war. I, was <laughs> I guess you were lucky. I was uh, mm -hmm. either too old or too young. Just, uh, just, uh, That's good planning, I'd say. <laughs> Um, what sort of sports were there in in high school when you were there? Well, there was football and basketball and track. The only thing I ever I I never was uh, as such much of an athlete. Lowell played football uh, later on. The, in fact, I think they had a championship state championship team. Mm. Uh, mother was always very upset about Lowell because he he uh, played center and his nose was always in the mud and mm. it was a total scab <laughs> all the time <laughs> yeah. during did the they, season where did they play the football game huh i would assume maybe bree stevens field if it was there then i'm not sure of that i don't know tell the truth i can't mm. remember yeah well, the only thing i were engaged in was was track i did some cross country running or, or High jumping, I guess. And you played in the band? Yes, mm -hmm. orchestra and the band. Oh, well, that's... No, the high school didn't have a band. Oh. I, I played in the band in the university. Mm -hmm. uh, did they have um, uh, auditorium programs when you were in school? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was this every day? That, did you meet in the auditorium? Oh, I don't think it was every day, but every once in a while there were uh, assemblies. Uh, uh, Interview with Walter Frouchy. What did you do in summers when you were in high school? Well, we worked, uh, both Lowell and I, and, and actually I think we were extremely well paid, but it was kind of fun work, too. Um, the YMCA in those days was a hangout during the winter and so on, and then summers uh, usually we went to the YMCA camp for a while, but uh, then also worked uh, at Camp Pignanola as uh, counselor. And, uh, was the Y uh, on the um, on West Washington as it is now? Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, that was quite a hangout uh, <laughs> in those days for oh. for high school activities. Uh, do you remember going to um, uh, parties and having um, some some fun with with um, girls and other boys? Oh sure. We I can't be specific as to freshman year versus senior year. Or, uh, Precisely, but uh, certainly there. We dated, as I just said, and went to the movies. And I also worked at, a, at the Fuller Opera House, which was fun and gave me my taste of the theater uh, as a stagehand mm -hmm. and moving scenery and things of that sort. Uh, Did you meet some famous actors and actresses there? Well, uh, I saw them at least mm -hmm. uh, George Arliss and. and uh, Mrs. Fisk, and uh, a play by Mary Roberts Reinhardt. I uh, can't remember who the star was. Hmm. Where were other? Where were there movie theaters? Well, the Grand was uh, across the street from uh, the Civic Center. It was toward the Capitol, uh, about one or two. On State Street. Yes. Uh -huh. The Grand Theater, then the mm -hmm. Strand was there, and the Orpheum was um, on Monona Avenue. Uh, and the Fuller Opera House, that was mm -hmm. where Barron's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was or is. Yes, I remember seeing uh, Ethel Barrymore there. And uh -huh. I guess it wasn't called the Opera House when you came, it was called the Fuller. Well, it had another name. I can sometimes remember, but not right now. Um, so you had, um, uh, I was, I thought, I wondered if you had a high school group in your church that did some things. No, not that I recall uh, anything. I thought perhaps you had skating parties or sleigh rides or that sort of thing. Well, uh, there were lots of things going on that we did our, on our own with our high school groups. We, we, uh, I think both Lowell and I were pretty active in high school. I imagine. Uh, well, were. well, I mean, we were <laughs> on debating teams, and Lowell was uh, much more athletic than I was. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, the same thing 
debates and uh, map dances. We call them map dances. Map dances. <laughs> that was matinee dances. Yeah, that's oh, right. I see. Uh, Were you aware of um, <coughs> there of, of people coming from different parts of um, of the city and were there different ethnic groups that kept together at high school? I don't think that I thought much about that at that time. Uh, uh, certainly they came from all over the town. I do suppose that you knew that some people who came from the east side uh, came from what you might say a working class family as opposed to many of the people from the west side who might have had faculty parents and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Although a great many of the, the of the latter, they went to Wisconsin High School. Oh, uh huh. And wasn't there an Italian? Well, that was an excellent school. Oh, uh huh. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that early. Uh, was wasn't there an Italian group and perhaps oh, yes, people from yes, the Triangle? Oh yes, yes, yeah, yeah, from the Bush. Mm hmm. <laughs> it was called the Bush. Uh huh. And they probably weren't necessarily your friends, um, because they, I think they're bound to be a little, little. Uh, little class structure even in high school? Uh, yes, although I, I don't know. Uh, you don't recall? I can't be specific about anyone there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think that we consciously, uh, there were a few blacks, uh, but not many. Mm -hmm. I don't think we thought much about it, to tell the truth. Well, it sounds like you had a pretty good time. Um, oh, I you, think so. Did you say you, you got a car when you were in high school? Yes. Uh -huh. You had to get over to Camp well, Indianola, I guess. That's right. I think uh, my father would borrow my uncle's car once in a while. And uh, uh, Did I have a car when I was in high school, or was it freshman year college? I was wondering if they had a I bus, think it, maybe. I think it was even a little later before oh, I had a car. It was, a, it was a Ford sports car. It practically was feet straight out. And <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was pretty jazzy. Well, that, well it was about a third, third-hand car too. <laughs> I presume that the camp might have had a bus that picked up uh, the pupils who were. No, it had a oh. boat. Oh, a boat. Huh? Oh, and all these kids, there's about 150 or 200 of them. They come from uh, Chicago. Uh, Orson Welles was one of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, but with his, uh, at least 90 percent of the rest. Not that this makes any difference, but they were Jewish. Oh. And uh, I had the littlest kids of all to take care of. Six years old, several of them. And, uh, Goodness, and it was a attending camp and spent the summer there pretty much. And of course, you got there ahead of time to put up the tents and to work uh, around about. And, and they, uh, they stayed for a couple of weeks at a time? Oh, more than that, all oh, summer. They did. Oh, it was a whole summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was it was a private camp. I, I don't remember what the what the what the cost the families, but uh, so you then after the uh, boys did leave, then of course there was a cleanup uh, mm -hmm. assignment. Mm -hmm. So it was a all summer's job for you. That's and right. With pretty mm -hmm. much the same That's right. same group. And for that time, very well paid. And I think in high school, I got five hundred dollars a summer. Oh which was, <laughs> at that, that time, was a lot. lot. Well, it sounds like it was a lot of work taking care of the youngest children. Well, yeah, but it was fun, too, because uh -huh. uh, you were outdoors. And well, I suppose you could have some time weekends to yourself. Uh, oh, every yeah. once in a while, sure. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Lowell and I each had a, a small boat by that time and with a, with a single-cylinder engine in the front, a launch. We called it putt-putt. <laughs> and we'd go weekends when we had a day off, we'd go home or something that sort, uh -huh. across the lake. But the camp had a, a a boat or a launch. It was would hold, I suppose, uh, thirty or forty people, and all the groceries and things were brought that way. There was a truck out there, but the roads, of course, were impossible, mm -hmm. and and most of the provisions and whatnot. And certainly all the the kids came to the camp by launch. Well, they did. Oh. Back and forth. And mail was delivered that Mail way. was, uh -huh. well, many of the cottages had a mailbox on the end of the piers, and uh, there was a mail boat hmm. at that time. Uh, your speaking about um, groceries reminded me, I wanted to ask you about um, some of the stores around the square when you were back in your youngest days that you remember. 
Well, I think one of the best known stores in Madison in my very early years was Opel's Fancy Grocery. O P P E L. Wells Opel. They lived around the corner from us. Was a good uh, friend of mine. Oh. And you know, I saw his sister at the Elvium uh, just Sunday before last. Oh. She came and spoke to me. I hadn't. I'm not sure I would have recognized hmm. her. Uh, I can't think what her married name is. And she lives in Madison. She lives in Madison. Oh. She would have been older. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was. But um, Wells was just my age. Uh, the, then across uh, the street from that was another grocery, um, uh, Nelson's, mm -hmm. and then uh, a block down, and it would be right across, uh, is it, it's vacant now, but right across from the Simon House was a butcher shop called Selix, S-O-E-L-E-C-H, mm -hmm. Selch. Mm -hmm. So there were there were food stores around more oh, yeah. than there are now. Yeah, mm -hmm. but off on Main Street, mm -hmm. not on East Washington. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that they um, delivered groceries in those days. So. Yes, I think so. But also, uh, every once in a while, um, I, I don't know if it was every day or a certain day of the week, uh, a wagon came along oh. uh, outside uh, with a, with a fresh vegetables and mm -hmm. uh, eggs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, what was the name of that fellow? His son is one of Madison's famous piano players now. He mm -hmm. changed his name. Uh, he goes by the name of Blake, Jerry Blake. Have you ever heard him? My daughter took lessons from him. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, it was his parents who had this uh, uh, vegetable this wagon. wagon. And, of course, oh. we, the ice man always came, too. Oh, yes, I suppose. <laughs> or the ice box. Uh -huh. so. um, I imagine you got sent to the store. That's right. That's why I remember now. these places. Just a few blocks and away. And right next to that, Nelson's across the street was a, one of Madison's most famous stores. It was Andrew Mayer's. You must have, if you're doing this kind of research, heard about Andrew Mayer. Mm -hmm. That was uh, that was everything. Oh, I see. Uh, even the even the smell of the place was uh, pharmacy and uh, uh, open bins of grain and harness and. Uh, Barrels of this and barrels of that, and, and oh. not so much food. Although I'm sure there was there was block cheese under a, oh, uh -huh. under a big glass <laughs> dome. And, uh, <laughs> that was the original department store. Kind of a, well, kind of a hardware store and a farmer's place and oh. feed and grain. And uh, uh -huh. but also he was a um, he had his own concoctions uh, <laughs> for all kinds of diseases and things that sort. Oh, in the pharmacy part. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. You've probably heard of Professor Leith, C.K. Leith. I don't think I have. Well, he was a very famous uh, geologist at the university and one of the top professors, but his wife was Andrew Mayer's daughter. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, that will be very interesting to have recorded here. Um, well, so after you had gone to um, high school and... Um, graduated with um, your group and then you went right on to university from mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was no choice about your going? Uh, no, I, I think I looked at some pictures, uh, this is just my own idea, but they never came out of course and I don't think I disgusted much of, of West Point, oh. thinking I might want to go to a military school, but I don't know why, but that didn't happen. No, I went on to to the university. Mm -hmm. And what course did you take there? Uh, English. Oh, you were a reader, as you said. Um, My uh, freshman teacher was uh, Helen White. Oh, that's, a, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> well, you know the name, of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, the library. She was very uh, inspiring, I guess. To both oh, she was great. Teacher. I should say so. Always wore a purple dress. And, <laughs> yes. And uh, it was very somewhat dramatic, I think. Uh, I wrote my thesis under Sonny Pyre, though. Pyre? Sonny Pyre. P -Y Sonny, of course, was a nickname. Oh, P-Y-R-E. Oh, I haven't heard of him. Uh -huh. He was, uh, well, he wrote several books, and uh, mm -hmm. he was um, a man's man. Mm -hmm. uh, he acted in, well, he sponsored the Harrisfoot group, and he, I think he might have been on the athletic board, too, I'm not sure. Did you live at home yes. or on campus? Mm -hmm. 
except for one year, one semester. One semester I stayed in the fraternity, oh. just for the experience. I see. You joined a fraternity? Then? Yes, uh, uh -huh. Sigma Nu. And uh, uh, I presume you studied hard, and uh, but had a good time at the same time. Yes, I, I think, uh, did reasonably well. Didn't achieve uh, my wife. She was a junior five eight, but uh, I came close. Put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when did you meet your wife? Well, uh, that's a long story. Not exactly a long story, but I was one of the editors of the Cardinal, and uh, uh, my wife. Uh, won a scholarship to France, and we put her picture on the front page, and uh, going around the stacks in the library, she was of the same class, but I'd never seen her or known about her, but uh, having run her picture, uh, we came together just uh, in the library, and so I spoke to her and said that I understood she was, uh, this is my senior year, that she was uh, had a scholarship and was going to be in France, and I said, I'm going to be in France next year, and, uh, uh, which I was, and I said, maybe I'll see you over there. <laughs> that was the last uh, that I knew of her in this country, but uh, we did get to get together in France in 1924 and had fun going to shows and doing this and a little doing that, and what some you, other people, too. What were you doing in France? Well, uh, I got kind of interested uh, uh, about that time. And you know, sometimes somebody I really ought to check into a woman by the name of Quayle, Miss Quayle. And uh, I'm going to ask Bill Sewell. So you, know, you know Bill, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Sometime he must know something about this. Uh, in fact, I think I did ask him about Conrad Hoffman. Conrad H Hoffman had an operation in uh, Geneva and uh, sponsoring what I suppose you would really call a peace movement thing. And uh, mm -hmm. Uh, in spite of the fact that I wanted to go to West Point, I guess by that time I was uh, much more liberal than maybe I am today. Anyway, I wanted to go to this conference, and uh, it was held at a place called Schloss Elmau in uh, um, Austria. And uh, students from all over the country went to this uh, conference. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to go. And uh, I had a friend, uh, uh, Percy Kinsey, that I had traveled uh, um, to California with in 1922. With we, we, by that time, I had a Model T Ford, and four of us drove to California, and uh, on the old Lincoln Highway. And uh, Percy was a great guy. He just died last year too, and. The two of us were going to go, and at that time there was a thing called student third class. It literally was a steerage of the big ships, and oh. didn't cost all that much, although relative to other things I suppose it did. But anyway, any courtesy of my family, and uh, it was just wonderful of them, they, they uh, permitted me to go in, to Europe, and, uh, and he, courtesy and I did all of Europe that summer of 19... Was this sort of a graduation present? Yeah, I suppose you might uh -huh. say that was it. Then Percy uh, uh, came home, but I stayed on and, uh, and went back to Paris and went to the Alliance Francaise and do uh, part time and did this and did that and toured around a little bit more and uh, and again saw Dorothy. Oh. Yeah. And. Uh, did you both speak French? Well, Dorothy does. Oh. You know, I don't claim to. I just wondered how Sometimes you if she can't remember the word, I'll tell her what I the word is. I wondered how you got along in Paris. Oh, well, I lived with a French family for oh, a short see. time, and I did go to this Alliance for some uh -huh. time. And I'd had a fairly deep Latin background, so oh, it yes. helped perhaps a little sure. bit. Anyway, uh, I want to make this clear because uh, uh, Dorothy and I were married in France, but uh, not in 1924. Oh, I see. We came home, and uh, I started work for this company, which then was the Democrat Printing Company, it was Madison's morning newspaper, once upon a time, not at any time that I had anything to do with it. Then uh, she was hard to get. And <laughs> actually, she went off to China, and she was in Shanghai in 1926. And uh, so uh, 
1927, I said, uh, I don't know what you're worried about. Uh, too many relatives in Barnabalt. Her father was the banker at Barnabalt. Oh, what was her last name? Jones. Mm -hmm. And so was her mother's name. A lot of Joneses Jones Mary, out there. Well, <laughs> strictly Welch. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, every farmer in the neighborhood, uh, I mean, if you were going to get married and so on. Uh, I don't know, uh, what's going to happen all this? Is this going to be published? Uh, no. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, uh, I, I think it is kind of interesting. So I said, well, if you go to France, if we, let's go to France and get married. And uh, so, to make a long story short, she got a job with the Canadian Pacific, taking a group of gals to Europe on a tour, of the conventional grand tour. Oh. And I uh, cooked up an idea of uh, selling some advertising the Madison merchants, and this hadn't been done before, that I would mail from Paris with a French stamp on it, which would give it a little <laughs> extra kick and one thing or another, and that seemed to work out, although there were some adventures about that, uh, getting the right postage and overweight and a few other things. <laughs> <laughs> However, that all worked out, and so we were married. Uh, I see, and then... As a matter of fact, Dorothy had, um, at that time, Chester Lloyd Jones, you wouldn't have known him, no. Well, Chester Lloyd Jones was the commercial attaché of Paris at that yeah. time, and that was of assistance. And then she was uh, there ahead of me and posted the bands and got an attorney established and so on. So. And then you came back and set up a household here in Madison. Mm -hmm. You That's were right. working for the printing company. That's then. right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I see. So where did you live? Well, we started out in a, an apartment. Uh, about a block below the stadium, and but we were there less than a year, uh, or about a year. Uh, there were a lot of our friends that were in that apartment. In fact, it was called the Incubator. <laughs> 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 At least that was our name for it. Uh -huh. But my father had uh, uh, moved uh, out to the west side while I was still in the university, and of course this would have been four or five years later. And uh, then he built a house on the corner of Lincoln and Vilas Avenue. And the house that uh, they had had on uh, West Lawn Avenue was available. Yeah, that house is torn down now. Just uh, It's right in back of what used to be Fowerbox mm -hmm. store. Mm -hmm. There's a White House there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And we put a fence around it and painted the door black and fixed <laughs> it up. And so on. And that's where Dorothy and I lived until... 1932, when we built a house out here in Forest Woods. Uh, do you remember the um, uh, stock market crash? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, very much. Mm -hmm. Made a difference, uh, I suppose, to the... Well, I don't think Madison was hurt the way many other places were. Uh, I certainly remember the Depression, uh, because uh, actually uh, we were sometimes operating only three days a week. Uh, oh, is that right? uh, in our printing company. Oh. However, uh, uh, this is completely different from what we do today, and I don't know where, how far you're going with all of this, but uh, uh, this company is not what it was mm -hmm. back in those days. It was a long shot. But at any rate, we were at that time, in addition to straight, there was no more paper. That had been, well, part of it was sold to the State Journal, and the press was sold somewhere else, uh, the big newspaper press. and. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, other things I guess were just given away or destroyed. And uh, it <coughs> the company just became strictly a commercial <laughs> printing company, and this is where I was involved as a salesman and uh, uh, that sort of thing. But in addition to that, we were state contractors. And oh. at that time, and during the Depression, I suspect that kept us going pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, we did all of the legislative printing and practically everything uh, for all the various departments, different classes, uh, all of the bidding every other year. So your the business was not as hard hit as it might have been. That's right. It gave a stuff. certain stability. Was right. your brother? Did your brother go into the furniture company? Yes. Mm -hmm. I never worked for the uh, the uh, established family business at oh. all. Mm -hmm. uh, you had. Uh, of course, uh, Lowell and I. After Dad died, Lowell and I sold the fuel company. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We sold it to Shell, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Well, you've watched the uh, city grow from um, from 19, 
around 1900. Well, I do remember. I can't remember which class. Maybe it was about sixth grade, but the, the figure sticks in my mind that we learned that Madison's population was 23,000. Oh. And uh, today, I suppose, we're... Well, the published uh, on the fringe of town, it says 165,000 mm -hmm. or something like that, but I'm sure it's over 200,000, mm -hmm. certainly if you include as you should, Maple Bluff and oh, yes. and Monona and uh, other. It's almost a megalopolis. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you you remember back uh, the, the um, streetcars and the... Uh, oh, yes, yeah. Um, and uh, as you said, the wooden sidewalks and things. So you've Over seen the marsh. A, mm -hmm. seen an awful you see, lot the Ahara River, uh, I'm sure the canal had, or the river had been dug, but for some reason or the marsh wasn't filled in. Milt Findorf told me one time that when they they put the big chimneys up uh, for the gas company that uh, they couldn't probe deep enough to find the bottom oh. of uh, but i do know that that marsh uh, which started uh, well right at tenney park here uh, you know, see tenney park was all filled in too oh. uh, hmm. pretty much and the marsh went that way and then went up uh, west pretty much and came out into lake monona uh, about where the Elks Club is now, or even a little further down. Oh. So, and out near around Lake Wingra, I understand, it was yes, all marked yes, at one uh, time, although the zoo has been there quite a while. Another thing that Lowell and I both did, uh, I think we were in the same, we were in Boy Scouts, and uh, speaking of Lake Wingra, one of the fun things of even grade school days was uh, going to the other side of uh, where the Arboretum is now. Mm -hmm. It was called Gay's Woods. Oh. And a family by the name of Gay owned it, and we would camp out overnight and have our Boy Scout activities there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds like fun. Um, well, you've seen the the square change a good deal too, and uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with um, with the uh, but the legislature keeps going on, and that's right. <laughs> and the university keeps the city fairly stable. Oh, well, from an economic standpoint, yes. I think Madison, it's a salaried man's town by and large, mm -hmm. except for Oscar Mayer. There really are no great uh, large employers. And you must remember when Maple Bluff was um, developed in mm -hmm. Shorewood and Nacoma. And uh, actually, it was called Lakewood. Oh, was it? Before Maple Bluff. Like the school. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the first development was right here uh, from Burroughs Park on up to the bluff. Um, that was a real estate development, and the Johnsons did that. What it era was that? Well, I think that must have been around uh, 1912, I see. 13 or 14. I remember because they had a, a prize for anybody who would uh, draw a little, uh, like an architect's uh, drawing of the flat, the, the lot you would like, and what kind of a house you'd build, and so on. And I think I was uh, in grade school then and participated, and I got five dollars for it <laughs> for the drawing that I did. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do know that um, uh, those sales were handled out of the Gissold uh, offices. They were. Mm -hmm. The Lakewood Land Company. And eventually you bought a place out there. Well, we're in Fuller's Woods, mm -hmm. actually, uh, mm -hmm. which is part of the village, but uh, do you know where Fuller's Woods mm -hmm. is? Pretty close by well, here. Yes, but you have to come out on Sherman Avenue and then go back in. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a private enclave. The Yost lived back in there, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, ja the senior Yost is uh, mm -hmm. still there. Well, wait a minute. What is, yeah, that's right. Uh, except that he's in the hospital. Uh, oh. Not in the hospital, but... Uh, well, these people must have... Uh, the rent place. The Automobile must have made a difference if they they were able to come this far out to. Uh, oh, it did. And I'm, still I'm work sure. in town. I'm sure it it, it did. Uh, a lot of tra travel in those days by streetcar, though. Yes, I suppose. And another thing we did on particularly again on Sundays, or to take in the summertime to take the um, streetcar ride, uh, they were open. Oh. Streetcars. And benches crossways uh -huh. and uh, a running board on each side uh -huh. and, so and it went from the cemetery Fort, Fort Hill Cemetery out to um, Shanks Corners oh. and 
That was a pretty good ride, and probably yeah, cost mm-hmm. about five cents. I suppose. I don't <laughs> remember, but I, I, yeah, I imagine so. Well, a nickel I, or something. I remember that when I came to Madison, the, the buses were five cents and taxis were ten. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> well, then I don't suppose reasonable. it paid more than a nickel. Do you remember the Chautauqua? Uh, vaguely. My uh, recollection of that is through my mother and uh, her family from... Mazamani, I think, must have been rather um, academically minded and oh. so on. And the family, her family, would, uh, an older sister particularly, who was pretty good at art, would come to the show to talk with her. And that's Olin Park now. Oh. Mm-hmm. In fact, for a long time, I remember that was called Assembly Grounds. Oh, was it? Assembly that's, Grounds. Mm-hmm, it's now mm-hmm. Olin Park. Oh. Mm-hmm. You remember have the uh, shooting off uh, firecrackers on the Fourth of July? Yes, yeah. I wonder if you remembered any particular kinds you liked. Well, I think the big thing was uh, were bombs of some sort that, and you you want to get high, up on the second floor of that house on East Washington Avenue, and then you would throw as hard as you could. You, th- you <laughs> <laughs> thought when it, you know, the contact it would make a a noise and probably louder because it was that much higher, but I don't suppose oh, that's true. You put them under cans and... Yes, I guess we off. did that, too. I sure. remember my brother doing that. Huh? Yeah, sure, we did that. And mm-hmm. something called lady fingers. I don't remember yeah. what they were, but... Uh, I don't remember. My husband can remember some of those little incidental... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He came from Canada, didn't he? Or? No, no, he's from Milwaukee. Oh, is he? Mm-hmm. Uh, is that right? Mm-hmm. Well, um, I wondered if back at university, did you go through a hazing uh, process? Well, I think the year I uh, entered school out there was the last year that you had to wear green caps. Oh. <laughs> beanies. And, uh-huh. and uh, also they had the class rush. You know, I certainly do remember that because, uh, uh, well, there are two stories about that I can tell you about that. And, First place in the rush, I broke my collarbone. That's the oh. one thing. Right, was a uh, what do you call it when it's just a split? Uh, green stick. Green stick. Uh-huh. Green stick fracture. Uh-huh. And uh, so I, I remember it for that reason. And of course the the sophomores had uh, flooded the freshman side of the uh, with fire hose, which oh. uh, they got from the old red gym and pulled across the street. And uh, <laughs> so you were kicked with mud from the top of your head down mm. to your toes. And so then, uh, oh, just to stop it? all did that... They rush, did they grab you and put, pull you down, or what? When you call it a rush. Oh, no, there were huge sacks lined up in the middle of uh, what is now Lower Kansas. The lower Kansas, uh-huh. uh, Of course, the... By the historical... The library yeah. wasn't there, but uh-huh. the historical library was. Well, they, these huge sacks, and I suppose they were filled with hay or something, and there must have been about ten of them, you can see pictures of this. I've seen it in old books mm-hmm. or yearbooks or something or other. And they were lined up in a row, and then at the signal, both classes uh, came forward and, and to, to get these sacks, and you were supposed to pull them back to your own side. I see. Just, just like pump, pump, pull them oh, or something uh-huh. like that, I guess. Oh. Anyway, uh, they flooded our side, and we were full of mud. So to stop that, we uh, ran over and broke the glass in the the fire thing and got hatchets and we chopped up the hose. <laughs> see. Well, uh-huh. the rest of that story is uh, uh, late in my junior year, I had been elected president of the class, mm. uh, the oncoming senior class. The reason I mention that is because I wasn't alone in this. The president, uh, a fellow named Rush, of the then senior class who were the guilty ones as far as uh, flooding our place. We were called into Dean Goodnight's office. He was Dean of Men. And uh, we were told that uh, that the city of Madison, who apparently owned all this fire equipment, uh, had still a bill of, oh, I don't remember what it was, let's say $340 or something like that, Mm -hmm. against the University of Wisconsin uh, for destroyed fire hose. And uh, that before anybody could graduate out of this class of 1923 or 1924, that bill would have to be paid. (laughs) Can you imagine anybody today doing that to students? (laughs) 
Boy. Well, well anyway, like uh, we, we did pay it. Though. Oh, I'm sure you had to. Well, we... Uh, you were responsible. We raised some funds. In fact, I guess we had some class funds. Who was the president of the university when you were there? Birch. Oh. But the year in 1924, I think, uh, or was it 25, the next year, uh, Glenn Frank came. Oh. Mm -hmm. But our, our year, it was Birch. Mm -hmm. E.A. Birch. Well, uh, do you remember the uh, uh, homecoming? Uh, uh, celebrations. Mm -hmm. oh, Those sure. were on lower mm -hmm. campus too, weren't mm -hmm. they? Mm -hmm. Big bonfires, and I think there was that one homecoming when uh, uh, Pat Powers, a policeman, killed a student. Really? I think uh, they collected all kinds of crates and things of that sort. This again was on the lower campus mm -hmm. uh, in that same area, same spot, and. Uh, barber poles and things of that sort, and, and uh, Powers tried to stop this. He was an Irishman who had that beat down there. I'm not sure this was homecoming, but I don't know why else was we would have had a bonfire. University policeman? Okay. No, no, he was a city policeman. Oh, uh -huh. I don't know that we had a university police oh. at that time. I don't remember that there was. Mm -hmm. And anyway, he pulled his gun, and uh, this boy was running away from the fire, and he killed him. <laughs> Gosh, that must have been quite a scandal. Oh, it was. So all the um, offbeat type of things that we kind of complain about nowadays and the troubles of the 60s uh, were not entirely original. I think students, even from medie medieval days, have been oh, always kind of I rough suppose. mixing. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did you um, uh, ski down that, um, the is it the Kekoper Woods, they call it, uh, up in the No, the, uh, the Bra uh, Bradley, uh, Muir Hill, you mean. Muir Hill, yes, I guess so. Uh -huh. Yes, there was a big ski jump there, and uh, there was some Norwegian, there was a Norwegian fraternity, as a matter of fact, that lived on State Street, the site of, next to the co-op that, there was a house, frame house where these boys lived. They were wonderful skiers. No, I never went off that, uh, oh. although I, uh, both Lowell and I did quite a lot of skiing and in fact liked it very much. Mm -hmm. I skied in Switzerland, but I, I didn't oh. jump. <laughs> did you get out around um, uh, Picnic Point and around sure. Willow mm -hmm. Drive? Mm -hmm. You used to walk out that way. And That's right. And then when we had that little boat, the putt-putt, we frequently you know, stopped there, picnic or something like that. Did you continue to work when you were summers when you were in university? Well, at one year, uh, 1922, I went to California with the Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, three other, uh, two of them then stayed out there and finished their schooling at uh, Berkeley. And the other boy and I came back here. Um, well, we did other things, too. I can't remember just what in the way of, and that certainly wasn't all summer, but it took most of the summer, I think, that year. And you used your English degree in, your, uh, in the printing business? Well, I suppose printing is, uh, if you know that mural out in the front, did mm -hmm. you see the mural? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Jim Watrous did that. I uh, wondered if he might yeah. not have looked like his work. Uh, huh? The title, Printing is the Inseparable Companion of Achievement. That's the only thing that I had to do with it. I gave Jim that. Uh, oh. And he uh, spent a summer doing that. Well, I don't know that uh, an English background, but it's as good as anything, I think. Uh, I just wondered what you planned maybe. to do with it when you, uh, if you thought you would. Well, I was very, very much interested in my schooling days in the theater. I thought I was going to maybe write or produce or something mm -hmm. that sort. That's another reason I went to Europe, because I visited all the stages I could, the Vienna stages, and that was before there were many of the turnaround turntables mm -hmm. or the up and down things and so on. So had you been in quite a few plays, and were you in Harrisburg? Well, and, uh, well, I was the business manager of Harrisburg, oh. and uh, advance man, and uh, advertising man, and that sort of thing. I see. And I was on the Cardinal, and uh, uh, along with Porter Butts, and oh. who was a classmate. And uh, yes, and I was in some plays mm -hmm. too. But you were more from the production side, is what you were interested in. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I took uh, I took uh, oh, a course or two in theater. Uh, what was her name? Gave a course in 
Gertrude uh, mm. Johnson. Gertrude Johnson, yes. Uh -huh. And I was, I didn't bask him all, I remember, practically up under the dome, kind of a funny place. Was the, the um, Bascom Hall, a uh, main hall, had been, had its dome burned sometime? That's right. Uh, I remember that fire. That's when mm -hmm. I was in high school. Oh, in fact, it? I ran all the way from high school out there to see that fire. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that must have been pretty exciting. And then there were some, uh, they were going to replace that dome and the parts for it. I don't came from someplace else, I think. But at any rate, it was right behind Bascom Hall, where the Commerce Building is now. It stood there just gathering rust and so on oh. for years and years and years. You mean the actual dome stood That's back right. there? That's mm right. -hmm. Oh, I just th thought it was wooden and that it all burnt. Well, I think it did, but where this came from, and I think it was some other dome. Uh, you have to ask there some university historian as to what that was. Uh -huh. Well, it, it was... Uh, it was metal, I'm sure, and there was a lot of it, but the dome never was built. Oh, uh -huh. well, it hasn't been missed too much. It no, seems to me. <laughs> no. But you, the classes you went to were were primarily in uh, South Hall and North right. Hall around there. Uh -huh. the South Hall and Bascom Hall, and uh, what I think is still a biology building. Burge Hall. Uh, mm -hmm. We had uh, Wild Bill Keekhofer gave. There's economics lectures there, and music hall, Carl Russell Fish, and oh, history. And, mm -hmm. and, and the uh, administration building was down there across Park Street, wasn't yes, it? Yes, right, while? right on the corner. Mm -hmm. And some of the, didn't I hear that the president lived at his house right about where the union is That's now? right. Uh -huh. I okay. don't know when that was built, but uh, it must have torn down that. Well, I, he didn't live there uh, in the, the 20s when I was in school, but, I, but the house before the Union was built, mm -hmm. the Van Heys house was used, uh, uh, well, I think the Cardinal offices were there, and uh, oh. the Memorial Union Campaign Fund headquarters see. were there well, in my time. It looked a little different, although Science Hall and um, and the old Red Gym were there. And uh, I had an uncle, my mother's brother, who was a graduate of the class of 1885. And he was the clerk of the works for that science hall. Oh. And there's something remarkable about that. I can't remember just what it was, whether it's freestanding, self-supporting, or something rather. Uh, but the um, architect and the man who really was the supervisor, I think, was a man, uh, Professor Conover. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, my uncle, Albert, who uh, graduated from the engineering school, and I think letters and science too. I think he took two degrees. Then uh, after that, he got a job and went out to Seattle and got uh, either malaria or typhoid or something and died. <laughs> mm. Well, you've seen a good. Well, you've given me a lot of uh, recollections too. This <laughs> yes. is kind of fun. In well, it's kind of fun to go back in your. Uh, to yeah. your childhood think about days things that you hadn't thought of. See about. what you remember. I would have remembered much more, I think, uh, five or ten years ago. But you know, see, I'm 82. I haven't been born in 1901, and uh, things begin to escape you a little bit. Well, I'm not so sure. I think um, it, it happens to. I think sort of springing this on you is uh, uh, you <laughs> don't have time to think about it too much, but. Perhaps now, in the next few days, you will remember lots of other things <laughs> you hadn't thought about. Well, but Madison's a pretty good place to live, I imagine. You thought, oh, I'm having spent should, your life here. I should say so. I don't think there's any better place, really. Mm -hmm. Madison's a lovely, beautiful, wonderful place. If you're fortunate enough to have a business and a situation where you can afford to stay here. But I think a great many university students want to stay here, but then they can't. Of course, you can't absorb one. 40,000 students every year. Oh, well, yeah. it wouldn't be 40,000 in one year, but... Uh, no, but there are a lot of them stay in uh, <laughs> dentists and uh, lawyers and find there isn't a that's place right. for yeah. everybody. That's right. But the situation with the lakes and the academic community... Mm -hmm. That's and, right. Uh, it, right. It's, uh, I certainly feel... But at the same time, it. as you pointed out, uh, it has changed a great, great deal. And my father was active 
member of a club that was called the 40,000 Club uh, when I was in grade school or along in those years. And the idea, this is sort of a Chamber of Commerce thing, the idea was uh, to push Madison's population to get the 40,000. Oh, <laughs> hadn't quite reached it then. No, that's what I said, as I recall, uh -huh. it was 23,000 somewhere along my grade school years. Do you remember if, um, if prohibition affected the, the city very much? Well, we all uh, we all heard uh, of what went on down in the so-called bush. Uh -huh. um, this was during my college years, and uh, uh, I can't say that uh, the group that I was with, and I was certainly was an, it might be called an activity boy and so on, that uh, liquor was a serious problem, except maybe on football weekends. Oh. Uh, in fact, I think I wrote an editorial that had some notoriety called uh, The Annual Drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you but, hear about uh, those. Uh, I, I really, uh, in fraternity life and so on, it, it it didn't seem to affect me, or I wasn't that aware of it, except, as I say, on occasions. Well, during the, the 20s, um, there was quite a lot of, uh, I suppose, the rah-rah stuff with the raccoon coats and the yeah, yeah, flask that's right, um, that's right. with um, uh -huh. the bathtub gin. And well, there the certainly was bathtub gin, and there was... Um, uh, moonshine, I think it was called, or bootleg. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some of it, uh, sure. Well, I heard of regulations earlier that they that no uh, liquor was allowed on within a mile of the campus or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, supposedly. That's right. And they were pretty strict about. And there was what was called near beer, 3.2, I think it was. Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember that vaguely myself, <laughs> <laughs> hearing about it. Uh -huh. Well, I certainly. Um, I uh, appreciate your uh, telling me all these recollections. I, did you, one thing I thought you might remember was was um, the beginning of radio. Remember having a crystal set in your house? Well, I, I was just going to say, um, um, and again, I can't pinpoint this year, but maybe, maybe you'll know what the year is. When I was working at Camp Indianola, and as I said, I had these very, the tiniest kids, and in my tent, I had gotten a copy of Popular Mechanics, and uh, as a project, I uh, I got a tin can and a piece of crystal and uh, uh, some earphones. I think it might have been a kit that I sent for. And anyway, the, the idea was to put this all together mm -hmm. on a board, uh, which I did, and the boys helped or tried to help, and we got together. And, a very, and there was a... Um, a model size 6 battery that, uh, oh.